All right, here we have the program we looked at before with the menu, uh, figuring out the discount for a price of an item that the user enters. So it's a, it was our first menu-driven program that I, we talked about. Right, again, just to recap, the menu is um, the five discounts that are available. The user enters one through five as their choices. We use diff statements to determine the discount amount. So we set the discount variable to uh, 0.1 if they select the number one from the menu which is the 10% discount and we proceed to do the rest of them that way we also added an else meaning if they didn't do one through five something else like six ten negative number wherever it was they got a message that it was an invalid choice so they get no discount and we set discount to zero and then we went ahead and did the calculations so I'm going to use this same program to introduce the switch statement to you which is going to do the same thing as this uh, if structure did so I'm going to comment this out for right now all right, and introduce the switch statements. And switch statements is basically an if statement, just in a different format. Um, behaves a lot the same, has uh, some limitations um, in the sense that this here, is, which is the menu choice, has to be an integer value, which we declared up above as an integer. So it will work in this case. Um, so that's the keyword switch. What you want to switch on, or what you want to determine. Um, basically to be equal to this or true to this and that's where you have your cases uh, and in this case menu choices are one through five so we have one through five on the menu choices here right during the case statements uh, just like in the if statements you know if menu choice was one we gave them a 10% so if menu choice is one it gives it the 10% discount if it's two it gives it the 20% discount and so forth so it behaves the same way in that sense kind of an if statement like if if this is one do this if this is two right, and so forth um, you can put multiple statements in here such as you see down in here we have two statements that are part of what we call the default which is equivalent to the else and just like how the else is optional in the if statements the default here is optional too so I could leave this off um, and then the other new thing you see here is this break um, and what the break means is okay let's say if menu choice is a one it sets this count to the point one it hits the break statement which means okay we're done with the switch statement jump all the way down to here this closing curly bracket and continue from that point on right, to the next statement which is doing the calculations as you see so the break statements there tell it when to stop right, so if you have multiple statements in there the break should be the last one because that means you're done with that case and jump down and out we're done uh, if you leave the break out and let's say menu choice was one it will set discount to point one but there's no break statement so then it will come right down into case two even though it doesn't match it just continues the flow of the program and discount be set to point two there's a break here so then it jumps out so they are needed to stop the case statement and there are scenarios where somebody might select a menu item or just you know, match a case and you want it to fall through in other words all right, if they enter this one that means all this applies or if they enter just this one this is all that applies uh, so you can have multiple things based on what you enter maybe multiple things need to apply right? multiple things will get set in types um, so you, there are scenarios where you want that um, but typically you're going to have the break to end each case again uh, when using the switch statement just to figure out the discount that we need to apply and we have the one statement down here to do the formula Right, and typically when you do have these menu driven programs you, the if statements aren't used so much the switch statement works very well with them so that's typically what you'll see with it All right, and so let's see how it works just to show you how things work it shouldn't be any different than what we saw in the video with the if statement doing the calculations for us so we're going to get the same look and feel we're not going to even notice that it's using switch statements we'll put 100 in and we'll say We'll give it a discount of 20%. Right, so we had our calculated at 80%, which is, I mean, $80, which is what we expect, um, similar to what it was doing before. Um, but this time I'm going to comment this out just to show you what the break does. And again, I'm going to select two as the menu choice. And you won't see it happen, but discount will get set to point two, and then discount will be set to point three, and it's going to give us the 30% discount instead. So again, $100. And I'm going to select menu item 2, which should be the 20%, but you see it 
calculated to be seventy dollars as that final price so it gave us a thirty percent discount okay so they are important they will stop and I'm actually gonna let's do this with the debugger here all right so I set my breakpoint and I'll start the debugger okay so the program starts and we get our type in the 100 for the price um, I wanted two for the 20 percent discount Right, and the debugger stopped. Right, that's what the yellow arrow means. Where this is the next line to execute. So I got the mouse over the discount. You can see it's still currently set at zero. I'm gonna have a step over one line. Right, now the discount is set to the point two, as you can see there. Hopefully, I know it's a tiny print, but now you see where the cursor jumped to. It's ready to execute this statement now, which will set it to 30. It immediately jumped from here to here because that's the way its logic is written here without the break statement. And you can see it gets set to the 0.299999, which essentially is 0.3. It's, that's a matter of how um, floating points are stored in memory. It will work out to be 30%. And then the program from here, since we have a break statement, will jump out of the switch and come down outside the, the switch statement and do the next statement that's after it, which is the final calculations. All right, so we'll stop that execution now. All right. And like I said, the default there is optional. We can leave it out, which then means um, if they don't, if they select anything other than one through five, right, if I was to take this out, oops, missed a line there. All right, and they say let's say answer six. There's not going to be a match, and basically what they end up is going to do is calculate the discount to be zero anyway because I initialized this count to zero up here All right, but there's no indication to the user why they're not getting the discount All right. so it's typically good to have a default in there right, to allow them to understand or to give them a reason that uh, as to why the menu choices were selected or the result they were getting All right, so a switch statement can basically acts a lot like an if statement they're great for menu programs and that's typically when you see them a lot there are you can use them anytime you want it's not limited to menus. The keys are the switch keyword, the menu thing, or the thing you are selecting on or switching on. It has to be an integer. And then the case of the possible matches to this menu choice in this case. It doesn't have to be one, two, three, four, five. It could be any menu choice. I can come up here and change this menu choice to be a 10. If I run it and I right now, if I type in a 10, it won't be a match, All right? Because there's no 10 here, no case 10. If I change this to a 10, which is perfectly fine in the order, and I'll run it again to get the breakpoint out of there. All right? And this time when I enter in a 10, right? one doesn't have a match, but we'll enter in a 10 as a menu choice. I get my 10% discount. All right, so numbers do not have to go in order in the cases um, and they don't have to be one two three four right? they can be what you need any integer value they don't have to be in order any possible values that are integers